For the past seven years, Pope Francis has been shaking up the Catholic Church as we know it. But now, the old pope has stepped in, saying enough is enough. Controversy is swirling at the Vatican as two popes, one retired and one reigning, appear at odds. And now, former Pope Benedict is weighing in. On shelves this morning, the much-anticipated and already wildly controversial new book, From the Depths of Our Hearts. The book, which is written in part by Pope Benedict XVI, defends the church's practice of celibacy among priests. But it comes at the same time Benedict's successor, Pope Francis, is considering whether some older married men could be ordained in very remote areas like the Amazon. Benedict argued for the necessity of celibacy, writing, serving the Lord requires the total gift of a man. Oh, I see what's happening here. <laughs> the new pope wants to change the rules so priests can have sex, but the old pope wants the rules to stay the same, and I get that. I mean, if I had been forced to be a virgin for 92 years, <laughs> I would also be out there like, guys, come on, those are the rules! <laughs> we agreed! <laughs> but I'm sorry, old pope, you don't make the rules anymore because you quit. Yeah, you can't just come back and try and change things up. It would be like coming back to visit a house that you sold, like, oh, interesting curtain choice. Uh, <laughs> you sure you want to put the couch there? And it'd be like, how did you get in here? I took a spare key. <laughs> I will say what's really strange about this is that both of these men supposedly talk directly to God, right? That's the whole thing of the Pope. But they're getting different messages. <laughs> it's almost like God is playing a prank on one of them. <laughs> yeah? You know, like one priest is going up to God like, wait, are we not supposed to have sex? And God's like, no, no, I'm just messing with other dudes. I'm just like, <laughs> look how horny he's getting. <laughs> but either way, at some point, these two are always going to clash because they're different people, right? Francis and Benedict are very different popes. I mean, just watch, just watch how Pope Benedict reacted, right? When shirtless acrobatic dancers performed for him way back in 2010. It's like Emperor Palpatine was at a Chippendale show. <laughs> this is the real dark side. <laughs> now, check out the new Pope. <laughs> now, this guy f***s. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Boeing. Boeing, the aerospace company responsible for half the planes in the sky, and half the planes that are not in the sky. <laughs> now, for months, the company has insisted that they did everything they could to ensure the safety of their planes. But thanks to some leaked emails, that excuse is crashing to the ground. We are getting a look at some shocking internal emails from Boeing suggesting employees knew about problems with the 737 MAX before two deadly crashes. Boeing has now released more than 100 pages of emails as part of FAA and congressional investigations. In 2017, just as the planes were taking to the skies worldwide, a Boeing employee sent this message to a colleague. This airplane is designed by clowns, who in turn are supervised by monkeys. <laughs> One test pilot wrote, I'll be shocked if the FAA approves this turd. Wow. I don't know if Boeing has good engineers, but they do have some pretty good joke writers. <laughs> yeah, we should hire them for the next Comedy Central roast. They'll be like, Seth Rogen is here, the only thing that smokes more than a Boeing engine. <laughs> oh, and, and just by the way, by the way, why are Boeing employees trying to drag clowns and monkeys into this? First of all, clowns are good at what they do, all right? <laughs> it's not their fault that your plane sucks. In fact, airplane makers could use a clown on the design team. Have you seen how many people they can fit in their cars? Imagine <laughs> what they could do with the overhead bins. Imagine! <laughs> and you know what really pisses me off about these revelations? Is remember how when one of the planes went down, Boeing tried to blame the Ethiopian pilots? Remember that? Yeah? The plane went down and they were like, well, where was the crash? Africa? Well, there's your problem right there. <laughs> yeah, they made it seem like the African plane crashed because the co-pilot was a chicken, you know? And yeah, sometimes the co-pilot is a chicken in Africa, but that's not why they crashed. <laughs> The chicken knows what it's doing. So he's sitting there telling the passengers, buckle up, buckle up! <laughs> no, no. no, please. 
please, don't encourage me. Uh, and finally, some exciting news from the music world. Spotify, the popular music streaming service, is now offering playlists for lonely dogs. The company launched several playlists created especially for pets aimed at soothing them while they're left home alone. There's also a new podcast called My Dog's Favorite Podcast, which is intended to provide comfort through reassuring human voices, relaxing music, and ambient sounds. A podcast and a music streaming service for dogs? No. No, guys. No, let dogs be dogs, all right? I don't want to be at the park like, come here, boy, come here, come here. And then the dog is just like, oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> but at least they're doing it the right way. Because if you are going to play music for dogs, you do need to have a specific playlist. You don't want to play the wrong song. Like, can you imagine if a dog hears DMX? Yeah, he's going to get overexcited. DMX is going to be like, where my dog's at? And be like, I'm right here, I'm right here, I'm right here. Are we going to the park? He's like, oh, 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 there's another dog. This is so cool. This is a bad idea for everyone, especially musicians. You don't think about the musicians. Imagine you're trying to be a rock star, right? And then one day you're looking at your Spotify and you're like, damn, I'm blowing up all of a sudden. So you go on a big tour and you get on stage and that's when you find out all your fans are dogs, huh? <laughs> that's gonna break your heart. You're gonna be trying to be cool, signing autographs, huh? You wanna hook up with groupies, but you can't, it's just dogs. So now you're just there like, all right, I, I guess. I mean, see if that Labradoodle in row two wants to come backstage. <laughs> All right, let me get the peanut butter. 